Hello everyone, Alexander Flores here. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating a forgot password flow. So this is assuming that your user cannot log in because they forgot the password. We're going to send a verification code to the user and then they can confirm their new password all through AWS Cognito. So to get started, we're going to create a new file right here called forgot password. And then in here, we're simply going to import react and then we're going to export a very basic component. We're simply going to say forgot password and then back in our app we're going to go ahead and display this underneath the login so we'll import it here as well we're going to import forgot password and then we're going to render it right underneath login and if we save all of our files we see the forgot password component is being rendered right here so now going back the concept behind this is we're first going to ask the user for their email and then once they've sent us the email, we're going to send them a verification code automatically through Cognito. And then at that point, we want to change the form to look like a different form that has three inputs. One being their verification code that we emailed them, another one being their password, and the last one being confirming their password, so making sure they enter the right thing. So in order to do this, we need access to state so we can import the use state hook. And then we also need access to the Cognito user pool, which we'll just call pool. So now we want to gain access to listening to the email. So we're going to use state for that. This will be a blank string by default. And then we need to have a function. This will be called send code. And this will be submitted through a form. So we're simply going to event.prevent default. And then we're also going to have another function called reset password, which will also be sent through a form. So we're simply going to say event.prevent default. Now inside of our render function here, we're going to want to include a form, but first we need to know which form we want to include. We're gonna have two forms and only one will be visible at the same time. So in order to do this, we're going to create another instance of state here, and this is simply going to be called stage. There's a couple of different values we can have here. We can have an integer, we can have a string. You can even have a Boolean if you want. We're gonna stick with an integer and we're gonna add a comment here saying one equals email stage two will equal code stage. So again, we're going to be asking them for their, their email. We're gonna send them an email with a verification code. And then at that exact time, we're going to change the stage. So it looks like we're now receiving three inputs, their code, their password, and their confirmed password. So now what we wanna do here is we want to say stage is exactly equal to one. And to this, we're gonna create a form. On submit is going to be send code. And then inside, we're gonna have an input. Now this input is going to have a few things. We just want the value to equal email. And then on change, we want to go ahead and update the email. So we're going to have a function in line right here, and we're going to call set email with the new text. Let me minimize the console. Event.target.value holds the new text. And then we want a button, which will have the type of submit. And the text on this will be send verification code. So now this is going to occur right here and we want to go ahead and gain access to our user. We're actually gonna create another function called get user because we're going to be doing this on both of our functions. So we just wanna write it once. And we're simply going to return a new Cognito user, which we actually have to import. So import Cognito user from Amazon Cognito Identity JS. So we can return a new Cognito user. And this user takes in an object and it's going to have our username, which will be your email dot two lowercase. This is ensuring that it doesn't matter what case sensitivity the user inputs. And the second property is going to be our pool, which we can just say it once here because of ES6 and because we're importing it as the name pool. So now this is going to return our user. So now under send code, we're going to say uh, get user dot forgot password. So this object is going to have three different functions on success, on failure, and then input verification code. So we can go ahead and console log these. This will give us a better idea of what's happening inside of our console. Whenever we first submit our email, input verification code will be ran. So inside here, we simply want to set stage to two. And so that's going to make it so the second form will be displayed, which we haven't written yet. We can actually go ahead and write a basic one real quick. Stage exactly equal to and this. And then here, we're just gonna say coming soon. That way we can at least test to make sure everything works so far. And again, this reset password will be the on submit for our second form. So we can go ahead and save this, going back to our code. 
Okay, so I just noticed I had a significant typo here. This is just prevent default. I'm not sure why that happened. So if we save this, we now see that everything should be working here. We can go ahead and enter my email, click on send verification code, and we see input code, which is why we have this console log right here. So we understand that this method's being ran. And inside, we see some information such as the attribute name is email, the delivery medium is email. I suppose that you could set this up for other mediums. I'm not too sure about that though. We have the destination, which is the email with some things blurred out. So if you want to display this on the screen, you could securely, they should recognize the format. And then here we see coming soon, which means our second form is now rendered. And that also means that we don't see the first form anymore. And we see I have an email, we go ahead and check that. We now see our verification code right here. So now we can set up the next form and we can go ahead and be able to use this verification code to actually reset our password. So let's do that. Down here, instead of coming soon, we're going to display an actual form. On submit will be reset password. And then inside we're going to have a three inputs and then a button. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. We can copy this three times total. This one will be our code. And then we also want to set code. These are things I'm going to be using in state here in just a moment. Then here we're going to have password and then we're going to have set password. And then finally, we're going to have confirm password and set confirm password. So then we're going to rename this button to change password. And then if we scroll up, we're going to have to copy this three more times for the new inputs we're listening to. This is going to be the code and then we're going to have set code and then password and set password and then we'll confirm password and set confirm password. So now this is going to be ran right here and we're going to want to access our get user function here. So we're going to say get user and then reset password. This is going to take in our code and our password and then also an object that contains a couple callbacks on success. Oops. And we're going to do the same thing as we did before. Simply console log on success and then data. That way we understand that this is coming from the on success method. And then on failure, and we're going to console log this. Now beforehand, because we're entering the code or the password and the confirmed password, we just want to make sure those are the same. So if password is not exactly equal to confirm password, we can go ahead and do some type of alert or we can just uh, console.error. Obviously in your actual application, you'd want to make something more meaningful. This is just for our own testing purposes to learn this stuff. So uh, passwords are not the same and then we want to return. So if we entered two different passwords, this code right here wouldn't be ran at all. And so we can for sure know that the user meant to select both passwords. So here where we send the password and we have the success. So if I go ahead and save this and I go back to our code. So I'm going to enter my email again. We can send the verification code. We see the input code. So this is some stuff that you could display if you want. We see three fields. We know that this is the code, password, and confirm password. We can also go to my email and we can copy this code right here and go back, paste that in here. The current password, if you've been following the series, is password one with an exclamation point. I'm going to change this to password five with an exclamation point. And then we can go ahead and change the password. Okay, uh, I made a mistake. Reset password is not the function name. It is confirm password. So we can save this and we can try this again. We send the verification code. So here we see our verification code. We can go ahead and copy that. We come back, we paste it in here, and then we type in our new password. Our previous password, if you've been following the series, is password one exclamation point. We're going to change this to password five exclamation point, which we haven't used before. We can then go ahead and change password and we see on success. So there's nothing actually returned here. I forgot about that, but we still see that on success was ran. So if we log out and we refresh, we can now try logging in with the old password and we click on login. It says incorrect username or password. Change this to the new password. We log in and there we go. Everything worked. So that's it for this video. This is simply just how to have your users go through a forgot password flow if they did forget their password and they can't log in. If you have any questions or video requests, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. Code in the GitHub repository as well as other AWS Cognito videos can be found in the description. And if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.